Welcome. My name is Noreen Inglesi, co-founder and artist in residence for Cranston, Rhode Island-based nonprofit arts organization, Notable Works Publication. Thank you so much for joining us for Notable Works 2021 Earth Day Celebration, which will showcase and feature some of the very talented poets who contributed their great work to two of Notable Works recent publications, Voices of the Earth, The Future of Our Planet, Volumes 1 and 2, designed and illustrated by Marianne Rissoni of Second Story Graphics. Both books, which are available for purchase in Rhode Island at Barrington Books, Books on the Square, Stillwater Books, Wakefield Books, or by visiting our website at www.notableworks.org, poetically articulate the urgency of the climate crisis and include resources and volunteer opportunities with local environmental agencies. As part of this presentation, which is in three parts, Priscilla de la Cruz, President of Environment Council of Rhode Island, will share her insight and experience through an interview by Karina Lutz, and there will also be a much anticipated concluding multimedia presentation by Alicia Lair, Executive Director of Winoskatucket River Watershed Council. Before we get started, I would like to thank our wonderful sponsors and supporters, including Macari and Macari Law Offices, in honor of Anne Macari Tansy, the Helen Hudson Foundation, and Rhode Island State Council on the Arts, who helped to make projects and events such as this possible. I would like to also thank Notable Works Board of Directors, the Notable Works Ensemble, and all our volunteers as we work together and strive to fulfill the mission of our organization. We will now begin part one. There's a rift of emerald in the hill, just over yonder, where the orchids bloom past a full moon, and the air's immersed in the mirth of hummingbirds. There's a rift of emerald in the hill, where the weary sky stretches and yawns past eventide, stirring restlessly in the wind without ever sleeping. There's a rift of emerald where the wounded can heal in the dazzling myriad of monarchs gracefully hovering with their rainbow wings. There's a rift where even the wolves can roam unscathed in the untamed night and where all of nature is lulled to sleep by the aroma of the whispering pines. This poem is called More. On our finest stationery, we spelled out a December wish. More, please. More toys scattered in the grass. More devices attached to our fingers and ears. More logos stitched across our bodies. More bulldozers pushing cranes out of the sky. More cars blocking up the veins of our cities getting us to more places so we could get more. And we got more. We got more factories, more mines, more oil rigs hooked up to the heart of our planet, more greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, 
More ice melting, waves rising, storms raging, heat scorching. In the stunning realization of what we have done, we take back that wish list, and we turn that flimsy list of hopes onto the other side, a new blank slate, ready to fill it with wishes for more. But this time we ask more of ourselves. We ask ourselves how we can give more, in our neighbors how we can work with them more. We ask how the richest countries can do more and how the world can agree more. On the back of these wish lists, we write memos and op-eds, scribble down songs, sketch out posters, and write new kinds of wish lists. More protections to save the creatures in our streams. More panels to accept the warmth of the sun. More outstretched hands to stand with our most vulnerable communities. When each day asks more of us, asking what we will do to be more resilient, we share our answer in front of state houses, on phone calls with senators, in town meetings. More. Come. The storm is always with us now, and visibility is poor. And while the world loses color, while the gray rain blurs the lines between us, I would meet with you for one heartfelt, honest moment, to stand together here beside the unpaved roads of tomorrow and listen beyond our human voice to the earth as she quietly turns away. And know it is time for us to listen and decide. I would tell you that in these vague unraveling days of aftermath, I've heard the wind speaking in tongues, a presence as restless as fire, as sad and certain as the sea, trying to make contact, straining to invade my sleep, straining to pierce the glaze of small talk and endless cups of coffee pressing up against the tedious rooms of my daily life where I am busy and working and busy and tired. And yet, and even then, it would still reach into my heart with its troubled language to summon me towards perception, as if to say, observe. Behold the momentums of your history, bleak with the ghost lands of cities and forests, bleak with the trillion bitter choices that have left you here in the scorched air and rusted meadows where thinning creatures come to bathe amidst the dying light. Have you wrestled with this too and somehow known it was time for massive change? Time for us to empty our pockets of all the angry coins of revenge and war, of politics and greed and stand outside the storyline that holds us hostage, free to jettison its toxic prizes and frantic hardware, free to stand simply again, united, still, to fathom the enormity of who we truly are and what we may have lost. I would go with you then, out beyond the graveyards of the lost cities, to pause with you, pause and look up, up past skylines in fitful air, up where the unfinished night twists against the sky, where stars like dice are hurled against the mystery and miracles are born and squandered. And know it is time for all the world to be still, to stand together and feel the universe unfolding all around and hear the streaming fingertips of light calling out from galaxies far away for us to look and be aware that the great curvature of forces stand poised in fragile balance, awaiting our decision to listen and decide. In this time of rain, when seasons seem disfigured, the wind is loud and unrelenting. Come from mountains, come from mystery, spreading out through star-struck sleepless nights to prowl against our hearts, to speak to us in dreams, 
and wake us from this deadly sleep. And know that the long arc of consequence has finally arrived and chosen us to be the final word, the last defense, to kneel down beside this wounded miracle, to listen and befriend. For the earth is turning, turning back towards the terrifying beauty of creation where she was born, where all is still, and she will turn away from us forever unless we can decide here, now, with our backs against the void, to begin again with courage and with love to undo what has been done. So come. Come as close as you dare and let us go together. The storm is always with us now and visibility is poor. This is the time for vision and there are those who do not see. Thank you, Sarah and Thomas, and thank you for joining us for part one of Notable Works 2021 Earth Day Celebration. Please click the link to go on to part two.